From Utah's first TV station, ABC4 News celebrates 75 years. Welcome to ABC4 News at 10. I'm Glenn Mills. And I'm Emily Flores. We thank you for joining us here tonight. We do begin with what we're all talking about. It's the weather. Rain in parts, snow in others. This is a live look at I-15 in Beaver County tonight. You can see that snow is steadily coming down. It's frozen right this second, but it has been coming down for hours now in the area. Road conditions slick out there, so if you are heading out, please take your time. Storms just keep on coming. Chief Meteorologist Alana Brophy tracking all the very latest details for us tonight. Yes, Alana. we've actually extended that winter weather advisory for the Wasatch Front guys because the soggy conditions that we're seeing, they're going to stick around for the morning. So we want to give you guys a heads up as you get ready to make those plans. Let's look at the storm tracker radar. So the snow that you were seeing in Beaver County actually transitioned to snow after a line of thunderstorms. And we still have activity throughout the state. As we zoom in, you're going to be able to see where we're dealing with mixed precipitation, and that includes the salt. Lake Valley. Okay, so we're going to zoom out here so you can see eastern Utah pretty well, starting to the quiet a little bit down there in the southern portion of the state and then the north. Okay, as we get a little closer, I want to show you in and around Cedar City, Beaver County still dealing with snow, Cedar City Mountains. We've got rain and snow towards Powell as well as near Moab. We have rain. Okay, you head a little further north, mixed precip for the basin right now. That is going to be straight snow. We look at the Salt Lake Valley where that cold front came through and it really packed a punch. It changed rain over to snow. Snow in many locations, the bench is accumulating quickly, and you can see that extends all the way up into the Weber County area, Ogden Valley, and then we've got rain kind of peppered in towards Cache Valley. Evanston's dealing with snow, Park Valley, so we know colder air is on the way, and we will be dealing with some sloppy snow in locations, which means after midnight, things will start to taper off, but tomorrow morning could really see some slick spots. So a heads up there. Let's go ahead and take a look at the winter alerts right now because we were talking about how that winter weather advisor. Was for the entire state. It also now includes Tooele County as well as Salt Lake County and the northern Wasatch Front. So now our highly populated areas, the Wasatch Front, looking at additional snow accumulations as we get through tonight and into the early morning hours. The winter storm morning in pink. That's where we should see the heaviest snow. The high country getting hit hard with this atmospheric river really delivering. And then the purple you see throughout central and southern Utah, over towards Castle Country in the basin and Cache Valley. That is a winter weather advisory where we know that we're already. We're going to be dealing with accumulating snow. Okay, I want to show you real quick the avalanche danger because this is something that's going to be going up. It's already high for the central and southern Wasatch. Southerly flow really favors the Provo area, and that's why we do expect this to jump up here. It's high danger right now for that portion of the Wasatch. We've got considerable danger in the north, western Uintas, Skyline area, and eastern Utah. Okay, mountain roads looking really rough as we head through the overnight with avalanche danger continuing to rise for our Wednesday. This storm system wants to hold steady. We're going to track where the moisture is going and how long we deal with it, as well as how much additional snowfall you should expect coming up in my full forecast in just a few moments. Glenn Emily, over to you. Thank you, Alana. $188 million. That's how much the city of Ogden is looking at spending on a new project, but not everyone is on board with the plan. ABC 4's Courtney Johns joining us live from where this new development could be built. Courtney. Yeah, Glenn, I'm over by Grant Avenue and 25th Street outside where the old Hostess factory used to be. In fact, you can still see a sign up that says Bakery Thrift Shop. The city hopes to transform this into a spot where people can work, play, and live. Now, this project includes 100,000 square feet of office space, 300 apartment units, a hotel, a grocery store, and plenty of public space. The city says this will help transform the downtown area, but some people are upset over the money that's going into this, saying the developer should foot the bill, not the city. That money would come from two areas. The first comes from money made on an investment decades ago. The second, tax increment financing, which is money that will be made from future taxes involving that development. Tax increment financing for 30 years means that Ogden City school children don't get money from this project for the next 30 years because all the money goes back into the project. So that money really couldn't be used anywhere else because without the project, it actually doesn't exist. No update, right? Another concern Another concern is the money, the 60 to 85 million that will be spent on parking structures, which the city says would be paid for by money made from that parking system itself. And then another thing that we heard a lot of people talk about at today's meeting 
is just the history of this city and saying that they would like to see a bakery of some capacity be built around this area. Just saying it was really nice smelling around here with the old factory here. Reporting live in Ogden, Courtney Johns, ABC4 News. All right, thank you so much, Courtney. Well, the race for mayor is off to a sprint in Ogden. Two candidates officially announcing they're running for mayor, both of whom will take on Mayor Mike Caldwell uh, should he run for a fourth term. Now, ABC4's Northern Utah correspondent Kate Garner has been monitoring the race and has the latest. And I am officially declaring my candidacy for Ogden mayor. For me, I jumped into this race because of the community. Angel Castillo and Taylor Knuth both running for Ogden city mayor. Castillo has served Ogden as a planning commissioner. And Knuth currently serves as deputy director for Salt Lake City's Department of Economic Development. They shared a few of their goals with me today. The front doors of our city building are, are closed. They're locked. There are signs saying do not enter. Um, and I really want to open the city back up for business. And I think our primary clientele should be the residents. They should be the visitors of Ogden City. And we should put them back at the center of government. We have been at 145 sworn officers for over 20 years. And our population has increased by 20,000. That means our officers go from call to call to call to call with no break in between. The candidates have some different goals at the forefront of their campaigns. but. They also have a lot in common. Knuth and Castillo both say they come from poverty and know the struggle of making ends meet. There's some pretty incredible programs that are proven, right? We don't have to we don't have to reinvent the wheel when it comes to housing attainability. Housing projects don't work. Rent control doesn't work. So we need new thinking. Now, we reached out to Ogden's current mayor, but he's out of town at this point, according to his office. As of now, there is no official announcement as to whether or not he will be running for a fourth term. And new information surfacing tonight regarding the 17-year-old boy accused of shooting and killing a 16-year-old girl in Paiute County. And that girl's body found on a dirt road over the weekend. Four months ago, in early September, the suspected shooter was arrested for an aggravated assault charge a second degree felony as well as a separate assault count. Now at this time we don't know if these cases have been resolved but we do know this. He is now facing aggravated murder charges for the events from Sunday night leaving the small community in mourning. Um, they were both loved by all of our students but we tolerate stuff like that. Not with a beautiful girl that didn't deserve what she got. Detention hearing ending yesterday morning with the decision to keep the teen in custody for all future proceedings. Today, Salt Lake City Police releasing an investigative report against two officers saying they found no policy violations. The officers were accused of failing to give life saving measures to Ryan Outlaw, who was stabbed by his girlfriend back in 2020. The report on the officers finding they could not make sure the scene was safe and give first aid at the same time. Outlaw ended up dying while being treated in the hospital. Salt Lake City Police Chief Mike Brown responding to the findings. Here's what he's saying tonight. The Salt Lake City Police Department takes complaints or allegations of misconduct against personnel very seriously. Our two officers found themselves in a very dynamic, dangerous, and emotionally charged situation. They performed professionally, reasonably, and within our department's policies. And police say a high-speed chase turned into a deadly shooting in Saratoga Springs last night, killing a man there. Police saying that it started when they tried to pull over the man in Lehigh. They say he didn't stop, and a chase began into Saratoga Springs. Well, things escalated even more when police say he stopped in a neighborhood. They claim he tried to get into someone's house and claim he was armed. The officers gave very clear verbal commands to drop the weapon, drop the gun, show us your hands, uh, the, the routine, what the officers are trained to do uh, when they encounter a suspect with a firearm, and uh, that was refused. All right, police say that's when three officers shot and killed him. The suspect's name has not been released. A police protocol team from Orem and the county attorney's office is investigating the shooting. And a woman finally a complaint against the city of Saratoga Springs and police claiming that someone was harassing her. But when she went to police for help, she says an officer sexually assaulted her. Chantel Jones says back in 2019, she was the target of several random acts of violence, telling police someone shot her in the face with a BB gun and shot out her house and car windows, even slashing her tires. Now she claims the police department did not believe her and started harassing her instead. She also claims 
One officer used his position of power to sexually assault her. We contacted the city to get their response, but they said they do not comment on pending litigation. Coming up, evacuation orders and rescues in California. This as rain and high winds continue to devastate parts of that state. Plus, you're taking a live look at Beaver County where the snow continues to come down. Road snow is an issue not just in the central portion of the state. We've seen it along the benches and we're expecting it overnight for the Wasatch Front. How much in your yard? We'll find out in Utah's most accurate forecast.